Hey, Trina, how are you? Good, how are you doing today, Jay? Great, so you sent me some awesome videos the other day about something really interesting that's happened in the coral lab system. Yeah, it's really exciting. We have some coral babies that I'm now taking care of because we had three different spawning uh, events happen. Um, we had one in our coral lab system, which you see behind me here. Uh, we had one in our FPS system, which is very similar. And then we had one in our LPS system. The cool thing is uh, we didn't plan these. We didn't stage them. We weren't trying to make it happen. Um, the systems that all had the spawning are around five years old. Uh, the live rock, we've, uh, we've had for a very long time, but it has a really great um, sponge population, really diverse as well, which we thought was really neat that it wasn't just one system, it was multiple. And the even the part that I find more interesting is that two of the spawnings happened in low nutrient systems. So our coral labs is run low nutrient, and our SPS is also run low nutrient to achieve ultimate coloration. Um, all of a sudden, we noticed that in our SPS system, in a really obscure place, uh, we had a piece that was about an inch, maybe inch and a half with branches, Seriatopora or a bird's nest. Um, and it's grown. There's one other spot in that same tank where it's grown. So we thought that was really cool, uh, but I hadn't paid a lot of attention really to it because we went, okay, you know, that's neat. But um, then what ended up happening is in Coral Labs, we had a Pacillopora spot. We're... 90% sure that it's a Pacillopora. It's difficult because currently everything is like an eighth of an inch in terms of coral sizing. So we have to wait for things to grow, grow branches to be able to positively identify it. Uh, but it, what's cool is I think you guys might be able to see it right here. It's like a pinky purple color. And what ended up happening is I actually came in. I started scraping down the edge of the tank, removed the coralline algae, and I noticed something looked different. We have a bunch of coral babies in here and I started looking around in there and there was around 75 to 100 uh, coral babies that were around an eighth of an inch, maybe some of them up to a quarter of an inch. Uh, so what we did is we cleaned all the coral line around them, we left them where they were um, and then I took 15 specimens, mounted them onto a plug and labeled them so that we can actually track how they do because Obviously, in the tank scenario, they might do well, but we have some that are on the side of the wall, some on the glass, some that actually landed right on corals. So we have um, some of these guys. So we've got these four-inch tiles that we use for a lot of our corals in the system. And so this is an example of one very small piece. I don't know if you can see it, but right, right there there is a little coral baby growing. So that was kind of, that's where we first originally saw them is actually on these bases. And then we started looking around more and noticed that they are actually all around the tank, which we thought was really neat. And then once we noticed that, um, one of my staff actually said to me, because I was really excited, I'm like, we've got coral babies. And he, they're like, wait, we've got euphelia babies too. Um, euphelia and cora, which are more commonly referred to as scammer corals. We are 95% sure that it's an Aussie gold, just based on the color that's coming out of them. Um, and what we found was really interesting in that system is that completely contrary to the way that the uh, styloporas or the pasilloporas and the seriatoporas form, they didn't form on any flat surface. They actually formed only in the corners of the egg crate a month into the entire process. Uh, they're growing. They're doing well. We are finding that um, very similar to uh, Jamie Craig from the Horman Institute noticed that algae was a problem with getting them to a proper age and such. We noticed we had a similar problem, uh, but if we put snails on it uh, once a week. So, you know, there's me putting one snail on 30 different things, um, usually every Monday. So today that's actually what we're doing. Uh, but it just gives that make sure that they're nice and clean. It doesn't... Uh, doesn't harm the corals at all because they're very gentle. Uh, the only thing is we lost one uh, one of the hammer frags, but it was really cool because last week we scrape out our tanks week on a weekly basis for the bottoms. And where I'd had them, uh, one of my staff actually found this tiny little, I don't even know how he found this baby coral, but he did. So we were able to put him back into the experiment again and, uh, and then go from there. So, wow, that's just amazing. So basically to summarize, you have in three different systems, two of which are SPS, very low nutrient systems, you've had um, SPS 
Coral's spawn, and then in your um, LPS system, you've had Euphelia's spawn as well. It's not clear whether it was one mother colony or multiple, but either way, you've actually had fertilization and settlement, and and now you can actually see these baby corals. So it must have been several months ago in the summer, early in the summer, possibly that, that this happened, and you weren't and you weren't intending to to have coral spawn. Amazing. No, we weren't, and we. That's what I think is really cool is actually that. They were able to form the gametes, then form the mini corals and survive to a point that they became visible to us, all without us without us doing anything other than what we're naturally doing in our tanks, which, you know, to me seems really cool. So, you know, if we start focusing a little bit more, maybe we'll be able to, uh, you know, try to make it happen on demand. Like, Does, um, do you have any kind of lighting at night? No, we run no, no, no light lights. Um, I was going to say, really, we have a pretty quick ramp up into the day, and then it's steady all day, and then ramp down, and then that's it. Hmm. So it's it's interesting because that's where like you don't have a sunset, you don't have a moon phase, we, we don't have a lot of these things that we assume trigger it a lot of the time. So that's also very interesting to me. And part of it that's interesting to me is that one of the corals, the uh, Seriatopora or the bird's nest, is actually from our, I believe, at least the DLI test that we did with you guys, if not our PAR test. So it's a piece that's been around for quite a while. Um, it's just kind of cool. You're like, hey, I remember it, it's kind of made its appearance a few times in, right? So. Yeah, so it would have started off as a pretty small frag, and now um, I think the, that's the colony right there in the in the background. Yeah, this one here. This was our first one that spawned. A second, it takes me a minute to get her out. It's a decent size. So I was going to say, so that's her there. And we definitely take frags off of her. We do sell the frags. We don't import this from the wild anymore. Uh, so she's been fragged multiple times. Uh, but she's doing, now we've, since we noticed she had a, um, a spawning, we're trying not to touch her. Because <laughs> we're like, okay, maybe she'll have another spawning. But if we, you know, poke at her a little too much, it might not happen. So. Mm, very cool. All right, Trina, well, thank you very much for that. It'll be cool to check in and, and see what's new up there in the future. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Take care.